Hi, British Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my August reading roundup. <music> are new to this video series on my channel, it is what I do in replacement of a formal wrap up and it incorporates a few things. I'm going to quickly run through all of the books that I read. I'll probably give some brief synopses and overall feelings on the books, talk about which ones I really liked and which ones I really didn't like. I will also do some bookish stats as well as my haul and unhaul and at the very end we are going to balance the books to see if my physical TBR is headed in the right direction and that means down. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. I am currently hosting kickoff sprints for Slayer Fest and this video cannot go over a certain amount of time. This is one of the longest videos that I film every single month and so I need to keep it to a reasonable level. But luckily, actually not so luckily, August has probably been my worst reading month so I don't have nearly as many books to talk to you about today. But we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. So overall August has honestly just been an incredible challenge for me. My grad course started on August 12th and August is one of the busiest months that I ever have at my job. I am an academic advisor. I work in higher education. I have about 300 plus students that I alone am responsible for. And in August, we are currently heading into our one of our major semesters and we're also coming off the tail end of our summer semester. And it's literally when almost every single one of my students at any given point needs my attention or there's some emergency or something urgent that's happening. So dealing with that, along with having to deal with my grad course, it was incredible overload burnout central. It was just really mentally exhausting and challenging and it definitely affected my reading. I was pretty much able to get through all of the books on my August TBR and it was a pretty light TBR, but once I got done with my August TBR, guys. I just realized that when I did my September TBR, I failed to wrap up how I did with my August TBR. That's the first time that has ever happened on my channel. So I think that just goes to show you how my August went. I do want to quickly go ahead and recap how I did in August because I do feel like it helps keep me accountable. I want y'all to know that I'm doing what I say that I'm going to do. So here's how this is going to work. I'm quickly going to go over my TBR for August and then we'll talk about what I read, what I didn't read, and all of the other books that I read for the month. Okay, so we're off to a chaotic start. It's fine. Everything is fine. We're good. So if y'all remember correctly, when I played my August TBR game, I pulled multiple draws. I pulled like nine or 10 draws and hardly any of them landed me on prompts where I could select a book. So that actually lent itself to a very light August TBR. So the first prompt that I landed on that I actually had to select a book for was a book with more than one timeline. For that, I selected The God of the Woods by Liz Moore, which I did read. I actually really enjoyed this one. However, I didn't get as much out of it as I think I otherwise could have just because of how crazy busy the month of August was and how distracting. I was. If you've read this book, you know that it's kind of more of a slow burn literary mystery than anything else. There are a lot of characters. There are a lot of timelines going on. It bounces back and forth throughout the entirety of the book and it takes a certain level of concentration. And while I was able to follow it pretty easily, and like I said, I did overall enjoy my reading experience, I think I would have had a much better time with this had I been more in the mind space for it. So that is absolutely not a problem with the book. It is a problem with me, but I still gave this a solid, solid four stars. I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed Liz Moore's other release so I will certainly be picking up more from her in the future but I did read this and satisfy that prompt. The next prompt I landed on that I could actually select a book for was to read either a romance or contemporary and that worked out perfectly because one of the books that I needed to read for the project I'm doing with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand was Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez which I did read but I'm not going to say anything about it in this video because I will be having a vlog coming out in mid-September that talks about my thoughts and feelings. I have read everything that she has written so I've currently read her to zero for the most part and I'm very happy about that but I did read this and satisfy it that prompt. The next prompt I landed on was color generator and it landed me on this interesting greenish color. I can't remember the name of the color off the top of my head but the dream daughter by Diane Chamberlain fit that prompt perfectly. This is another one that I'm really not going to talk too much about because again it is another book for that project that I'm doing with Sarah. This definitely had a lot of signature things that Diane Chamberlain's stories usually do. Very compelling very unique concept and like I said you will get to hear all of my thoughts and feelings about this book in the vlog when it comes out in September. And the last prompt that I landed on for TBR gameplay was actually TBR game. And basically what that means is that I have to watch somebody else play their TBR game and use one of their prompts to select a book. Now during August was Pick Pongathon and I was participating in that for the first couple of weeks while I could but then I completely petered out. I could not participate in it. I did not have the bandwidth. But Pick Pongathon is based off of Crystal from Bond Book Review's own TBR game and so part of this was having her hosts play her TBR game and generating prompts. And one of the prompts that my team had to satisfy was a TBR veteran. So I used that and I selected Beyond Reach which is the sixth and final book in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. So I obviously cannot say much about this, but I did finish this. I will say that 
works, you should probably read the Grant County series before you read the Will Trent series because even though there is no crossover until like book three or four in the Will Trent series, I will say that I was spoiled for what happens at the end of this book by Karen Slaughter herself because in the opening for book two of the Will Trent series, she says what happens in here and I could not believe that I had spoiled myself. So I knew exactly what was coming in here. However, I did not know it was going to wait until literally the last page of this book to do it. So she ended the series on quite the kicker y'all. So I was a little bit frustrated by that. I'm not going to lie, but I did know to expect it. And I do know that we're going to get a little bit of resolution and closure to this, like in the Will Trent series. So I'm not super mad about it, but she definitely ended this on a bang. I'm really glad that I stuck with the series because I do think that it got better and better and better as time went on. And I really enjoyed the first two books in the Will Trent series. So I will absolutely be continuing in that. And I'm glad that I was also able to finish a series for the TBR veteran. And then, like I said, I did try to participate in Pick Pongathon. It didn't really work out. So I'm not going to really review all of the books that I had planned for Pick Pongathon and what I read and what I didn't read, although I did really read most of them for the most part. I'm just going to quickly run through all of the other books that I read for the month of August, starting with Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I actually had to read this to satisfy another reading challenge. It was to read two books with somewhat similar plots. And the first book that I read was The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picoult. And this is kind of a sliding door story. It follows our main character, Hannah. She has no job, no career, no love, kind of like no life prospects. She's a little bit lost and she moves back to Los Angeles, which is kind of her hometown to be near her best friend, Gabby, and just kind of figure out her life, figure things out. And then you're following her as she and Gabby are going out to a local bar to celebrate her homecoming with friends. And that's when the sliding door moment happens. She runs into her high school boyfriend, Ethan. They have remained kind of friends throughout all of this time. There definitely is some lingering chemistry between them, you know, and so she has a choice by the end of the night to go home with Ethan or not. And so you're following the story as it explores both what happens when she did go home with Ethan and what happens when she didn't go home with Ethan. And I very much enjoyed this. I had a great time with this. This is a really interesting take on sliding doors. I liked each of the timelines on their own merit and I thought that they were both very strong, compelling, and interesting. So this was definitely a solid take on the sliding doors trope and I gave it a four stars. I also read The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer and I had a good time with this. I don't think that I enjoyed this as much as The Wishing Game but that's just because this is very much inspired by The Chronicles of Narnia and I thought The Chronicles of Narnia was okay but it's not really my thing. I'm not really a big fan of like fairy tales and whimsy and all of that stuff and this story definitely has that. It follows two kids who one day they go missing in the woods, they disappear for six months and they come out and they're virtually unharmed, unchanged and nobody knows what happens. Well one of the friends does remember everything that happened but the other one does not. And now they're having to kind of return back to this world to help someone find their missing sister and so it's all about them returning to this Narnia-esque world and all of the things they go through. And I thought that this was really cute. I really enjoyed the queer relationship in here. That was one of the highlights of the story for me. So I definitely had a good time with this. Like I said, you know, very Narnia-esque, very whimsical. I would say my only thing is, is that I kind of wanted more development of the Narnia-esque world. I don't really feel like we got a lot of development there. I would have liked to be able to connect to that world a little bit more. But for the most part, I thought that this was just very sweet and very heartwarming. And I had a good time overall. So this is certainly worth checking out, especially if you did enjoy The Wishing Game. Perhaps my least favorite book of the month and the one that I'm probably the most surprised that I didn't enjoy, House of Glass by Sarah Buchanan. I have really enjoyed the books that Sarah Buchanan writes with Greer Hendricks and I actually really enjoyed her newest standalone release that came out I believe last year. So I went into this one with high hopes and this one just did not deliver. So this follows our main character Stella and Stella is a best interest attorney and so what that kind of means is that she is an advocate for children who have parents who are going through a very contentious divorce and who are like fighting over custody and she kind of reviews the situation, talks to the family to decide where the child really should be placed. And so this follows her as she's kind of doing this with Rose Barclay and her parents. Now Rose Barclay is a nine-year-old girl who just went through some trauma because her nanny kind of plunged to her death at the family home and Rose hasn't spoken a word since then. So it is Stella's job to go into the home and kind of be really invasive and figure out what happened, try to help Rose, interview the mother and the father, but Stella quickly realizes that this is no ordinary family and there are some weird things going on here and it kind of goes from there. So for the most part, I'm just gonna be honest and I didn't really find this all that compelling or all of that interesting and it kind of plays on the creepy kid trope, which y'all know that I do not like. I do not like a creepy kid trope. And for the most part, the ending was pretty predictable. It wasn't anything super shocking or surprising and it certainly wasn't anything groundbreaking. So I think I gave this like a 2.5 stars. It definitely was not anything remarkable and I'm pretty disappointed by it. However, one that I was pleasantly surprised by was Like Mother Like Daughter by Kimberly McCrate, which is the newest release from Kimberly McCrate and it came obviously in the Book of the Month box for the month of August. I've read Kimberly McCrate in the past and I've enjoyed her work. It just hasn't really been anything like super memorable or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I was hesitant to pick this up, but I needed it for a project that I was doing and I had a great time with this. I gave this a four stars. So obviously you know that you are following two main characters. You have Kat and her daughter Cleo and they do not have the best relationship 
relationship. Cleo is very resentful of her mother because her mother is very strict. She has very high expectations for Cleo and Cleo always feels like a huge disappointment to her mother. So they are not getting along. Cleo is off to college, but one day her mother calls her home. So she's heading home. She goes in there and her mother is missing. There's some blood on the floor. Her mother's shoes are there. She has no idea what's going on with her mother. So you're following Cleo as she's doing an investigation, trying to figure out what happened to her mother. And she's starting to uncover some secrets that her mother has been hiding. And then you're following Kat in the days leading up to her disappearance. And overall, I actually really did find this pretty compelling. I was interested in both of the timelines equally. I wanted to find out the secrets that Kat had been hiding. I liked the overall resolution, even though you do kind of have to suspend your disbelief just a little bit. But for the most part, I thought that this was very clever and well plotted. And I was pleasantly surprised by it. Will I pick up more from Kimberly McCreed? I don't necessarily know, but this one definitely exceeded my expectations. And it was very well needed, especially after the disappointment that was House of Glass. And then the last one that I finished for the month of August was actually a little bit of a cheat because it was supposed to be on my September TBR. And that was Heartland by Serena Bowen. This is the seventh book in her True North companion romance series. This actually just got a whole new rebrand. So these are the new covers and they are super cute. I have really no problems with these new covers, except they do not match at all with the old covers. The old covers are very traditional romance, you know, with a hunky bare chested guy on the cover. And these are very cutesy illustrated covers. So I may need to think about replacing my other ones with these ones because I do think that they are very fun. I do enjoy these, but I don't really want two books that are mismatching to the other ones. You know what I mean? But I did have an okay time with this one. I think I gave it a three stars, but it wasn't anything terrible or anything like that. It just was not a new favorite. I'm really hoping that the eighth and final book is one that will like hit it out of the park for me. But for the most part, I had a good time with this and my battery is about to die. So I'm going to go ahead and change it and I will be right back. All right. So now let's go ahead and just quickly run through some bookish stats. Like I said, I only read nine books for the month of August. That was 3,198 pages. In terms of ratings, I had one 2.5 star, one three star, two 3.5 star, four four star, and one 4.5 star read for an average of 3.66 for the month. In terms of format, all nine of the books that I read were standard novels and all nine of them were purely listened to via audio. In terms of genre, I had three thrillers, three contemporaries, one mystery, one historical, and one magical realism. In terms of where I sourced the audiobook, I had one from Spotify, five from Audible, and two from Everand slash Scribd. All nine of the books that I read for the month of August were intended for an adult audience. And all nine of the books that I read in the month of August were actually from repeat authors. I had no new to me authors in the month of August. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and get into the haul and the unhaul. But of course, before we do, we have to establish a baseline to see where my physical TBR was at the end of last month. After reviewing July's reading roundup, I had 20 physical books on my TBR at the end of July. Out of all of the books that I read for the month of August, three of those books I had prior to the start of the month, meaning three of those books came off of my TBR in the month of August, bringing my physical TBR from 20 down to 17. Now let's go ahead and run through all the books that I hauled for August to see what I'm adding to my TBR. So we're going to go ahead and start with all of the books that I had in my August book of the month box. House of Glass by Sarah Buchanan, which I have obviously read. Like Mother Like Daughter by Kimberly McCrae, also read. The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer, also read. And then I did pick up a copy of The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer, which I had read previously. So all four of the books that came in my book of the month box for August have already been read at this point and will not be added to my physical TBR. Also in August, I did receive my pre-order of Apprentice to the Villain, which has not been read, but it is a top priority for Slayer Fest. So it will go ahead and be added to my physical TBR at the moment, but by the end of September, it should definitely be read. I also picked up a copy of Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid in August because I had read it. I enjoyed it, but let's be real. I want a copy of every single book of Taylor Jenkins Reid because I plan on reading her to zero, which I'm very, very close to doing. I only have one book left. So I went ahead and grabbed a copy to add to my shelves. And of course, I did go ahead and pick up the sixth and final book in the Grant County series to complete my collection, which has already been read. So neither this or maybe in another life are going to be added to my TBR, of course. Same thing with Heartland. I did pick this up as soon as I knew that I was going to be reading it in September, although I did read it a bit early. So I've gotten it, I've read it, and it's not going to be added to my TBR. I also picked up a copy of Running Wild by K.A. Tucker because I knew that I was going to be reading it in September for Slayer Fest, even though I'm very, very nervous. This is the third book in the Simple Wild series. I think it's going to be the final book. I don't know. I would love to see more books in this world. I'm just very nervous because I've absolutely adored the first two books in the series plus the novella. I'm just really worried that I'm not going to love this one as much, but I'm going to be brave and I'm going to read it in September. But for now, it is being added to my physical TBR. And the very final book that I hauled in the month of August was, of course, the Fairy Loot Book Only Adult Box, and that featured Long Live Evil by Sarah Reese Brennan. This is a book that I had never really heard anything about, but then Jay Kristoff was gushing about it. And so naturally that made me instantly intrigued. So of course I had to go ahead and grab it. This says, when her whole life collapsed, Ray still had books. She wakes in a castle on the edge of a 
hellish chasm and a kingdom on the brink of war, home to dangerous monsters, scheming courtiers, and her favorite fictional character, the once and forever emperor. He's impossibly alluring as only fiction can be. And in this fantasy world, she discovers she's not the heroine, but the villainess in the emperor's tale. So be it. The wicked are better dressed with better one-liners, even if they're doomed to bad ends. She assembles the wildly disparate villains of the story under her evil leadership, plotting to change their fate. But as the body count rises and the emperor's fury increases, it seems Rey and her allies may not survive to see the final page. So this sounds really interesting. I do plan on reading this for Slayer Fest as well. So we're going to see how it goes. These are the sprayed edges, y'all. How beautiful are they? Here is the beautiful naked hardcover. It's a deep red with gold foiling. There is the spine. There is the back. And here are the end pages. They're different on the back. So this is absolutely stunning. Like I said, I do plan on reading it for Slayer Fest, but for now it is being added to my physical TBR. All right, if my calculations are correct, based on the haul of books that I haven't read, my TBR remains at 20. However, I do have one book from my TBR that I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul. And that is The Quarry Girls by Jess Lurie. I actually tried to pick this up after Heartland, which truth be told, I probably shouldn't have done just because I kind of knew that I wasn't in the headspace to start another book. So this could definitely be an instance of an it's me, not you thing. I have read one other Jess Lurie in the past and I wasn't super impressed by it but I did already have this on my TBR so I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot. I made it several chapters into this one and it really just wasn't doing it for me. Also I'm really sorry if you can hear my neighbors doing yard work. I don't know how loud that's going to pick up on camera. It is very loud to me right here so I just wanted to mention it. But yeah so this basically follows a group of teenage girls and it sounds like there's somebody like kidnapping girls in their neighborhood and then you're also following one of the kidnapped victims at least to the part of the story that I got. You were following one of the kidnapped victims after she has been kidnapped and that was really the only part of this that I was really interested in. I wasn't really interested in like the teenage girls and their shenanigans. Y'all know how I feel about reading from young character perspectives. So that wasn't really grabbing me in and I didn't feel like it was moving fast enough for my taste. I kind of wanted a little bit more more quickly but I think that was also reminiscent of just my headspace at the time. I really felt like I needed something to grab and hold my attention and this just wasn't doing it for me. So because of that, because of my past experience with Jess Lurie, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and say goodbye to this one. We're gonna go ahead and end with 19 books books on my physical TBR. All right, so we are definitely getting down to it with regard to my physical TBR. I am not entirely sure if I'm going to be doing the balancing of the books anymore just because we're now we're getting to that point where unless I'm like actively choosing to read from that very limited pool of books, that number is not going to go down as drastically. And I don't really plan on unhauling any of the remaining books on the TBR. The Quarry Girls was probably like the last iffy kind of book that I was concerned about. So for the most part, I don't really anticipate this number fluctuating very, very much, maybe like one or two every single month. But the goal is still to get as close to zero by the end of the year. So we're going to see. I will keep y'all updated. All right, y'all. Well, I need to go ahead and wrap this up because I have got to get back to sprints. As per usual, please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I read for the month of August, or please let me know some of your tops and bottoms for the month of August. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a star emoji to let me know that you were here. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays. And I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.